return. <laughs> Please. I think you we know, should start. You know, remember Tuesday I was traumatized. Yeah. Uh, on Tuesday, I went to see a lot of our people that were injured, that were made. As I speak now, some of the guys were crippled. And some are still in coma. As at yesterday, we lost some of our members. As I speak now, we have over 20 people dead because they were performing their civic responsibility in a country that we are supposed to have a democratic setting. I think we've lost a lot of things. And the most important thing for me and crucial is the fact that we lost what is called democratic, a democratic setting in Nigeria. In Alimosho, for example, people were disenfranchised, people were attacked. When they called me, they had in some polling units over a hundred talks, each polling unit. Where they didn't have, they had 50. On that 18th of March, one of our coalition officers for the local government was adopted at Gunpoint. He was taken away. As I speak now, the injuries afflicted on him on the head has left him in a state that we do not know what will happen to him. Not only this, one of our honorable uh, the Labour Party representative, as I speak, is hiding for his dear life. Honorable Lumide, who happens to represent us in the Sunilere constituency board, they gave a ransom for his life. So, we suddenly turned Nigeria, where we are supposed to have leaders of repute, and they have turned themselves to killers. Labour Party says, we are saying, this is unacceptable. It's a slap on the democracy in Nigeria. Senator so, Tinubu says, it's time for us to heal. What are you healing? What happened is like, a thief or a rapist entering into somebody's house and sleeping with the man's wife, continuously enjoying it. And then when he got tired, he now said, you can have your wife back, heal, and let's become friends. As I speak, a lot of people were displaced from their homes. They are seeking refuge in different locations. Families separated, pulled apart, ripped apart, only because they were exercising their civic responsibility. I want to say at this point that the international community The president of Nigeria has not addressed the barbaric acts, the gruesome attack of injuries and everything that was afflicted on people. Even the Sawo Luke Fire, they were jubilating. Jubilating over what? 
yes, definitely we're seeking to address the electoral chakra because election did not happen in the US. Whatever they said happened is a total sham. It's unacceptable, and that is why I, as the chairman of Labour Party, have asked for cancellation and also seeking the Euro European Union to come to our aid, the international organization to come to our aid. I said to the REC in Lagos, I'm talking about Lagos because when we had the 25th of February election, the presidential election, and we realized that people were attacked, people were disenfranchised, and so on and so forth. What we did was to write to INEC officially, and you know, there are electoral acts guiding every election, but INEC decided to turn deaf ears. They did not act accordingly. Electoral Act of one, Section 168, Electoral Act of Section 65, these are cases that we quoted and we expected them. Especially the issue of violence that marred this election. We expect, we were, I was shocked, let me say this, I was shocked that with everything that happened, with so many polling units that the election was not conducted, I let go ahead to say they are announcing the results. Which results? <coughs> Please ask INEC which results are they announcing? You know, For example, yeah. You know, um, I think there's something we forget. There's something we forget. And that is that 70% of our electorate is the youth. You see, um, I mean, I'm almost 70. So for many of us, what we're struggling for is not for ourselves. At this point, it's actually for our grandchildren. If we allow this kind of behavior to go unchecked and unpunished, then we are endorsing an evil precedent. We're also robbing our children of hope, hope in the future of this country. I think we all know the rate at which our young people are jumping ship. They're leaving the country. We call it Jackba. I mean, it's an alarming rate. We're not a country that can afford to lose the cream. This is what we're losing, our lifeblood. Our young people are the lifeblood. So, so when, when things like this happen, and you look at them not just in the narrow context of did I win or lose this election, it's, it's, not, it's not as simple as that, but in the broader contra context of where is the country going in terms of especially our youth and their confidence in our ability to establish a democracy. You cannot build a house upon the sand. We cannot build our democracy on these kinds of rascality and bad behavior. It is just not possible. It's just it's not possible. But the, many of the people in Lagos have been traumatized, not just those who were in the direct line of this violence, but people who are relatives, who were part, you know, observers, people also who were prevented from voting. I mean, there are two young men, one I was told came all the way from Ghana very quickly to vote in the hope that he would be here Saturday, he came on Friday, he would vote on Saturday and go back to Accra so that he could start work on Monday, you know, go back to work on Monday. In VGC, there was no voting on Saturday until Sunday. Another one came from Angola. I mean, there are people who believe in this country. What are we? And it's not just Nigerians. And it's not just young people. I mean, there are multitudes of people who expect more from us. We are failing abysmally. We're failing abysmally. But to go back to the particulars of the act, there's what you call the margin of lead. If a number of registered voters in cancelled polling units, in other words, people who couldn't vote, is greater than the margin between the top two candidates, the election should be redone in the affected polling units. That's the kind of immediate response you need from INEC.
Look, this INEC has to be independent. We have to be able to believe in something. All our institutions are crumbling. Corruption is like a cancer in this country. It has metastasized. It's everywhere, from top to bottom. We know that Rome wasn't built in a day. There's so many trite, you know, Rome was not built in a day. Uh, the, the powerful don't give up power. You have to fight for it, etc., etc. Well, here we are in the face of all those realities. And the question is, what kind of a Nigeria do we want our children and grandchildren to live in? Because this one is unsustainable. Yes. We're getting to a point where one of the governors in, in Lagos in future, in particular, will be, you know, a hoodlum. And that hoodlum will become president. We're almost there. You know, you don't just roll over and give up because, you know, the struggle is going to be difficult, uh, you know, etc. Is it worth it? If somebody encroaches on your land, invades your home, as my sister has said, takes your wife as if, you know, she's free property, do you just look the other way? Oh, for God's sake, do you at some point say, enough is enough? I, even if I don't win, let me fight back. And you see, this is the fight that your son is watching. And he's going to say, my father fought for something. He may not have won, but he fought. And I think that's where we are as the obedient movement. It's not just about winning. It's not just about winning. It's how you win. It's not just about losing. It's how you lose. The, you know, some of us have, uh, you know, passports from other countries, etc., etc. We are here purely by choice. We believe in this country. We love this country. You know, there are two standards to our uh, national anthem. Now, if stanza one, the, the, the labor of our heroes past will not be in vain. We're fighting for that, okay? We're fighting for peace and unity. But in stanza two, we, we specifically address the youth. Yes. And we use the yes. term lofty heights. This, this can't just be words. And for the truth to you know, know. The truth. They can't just be words. The truth to know. It is so important that we take every institution in this country and we place them under a bright light like this one and we say to ourselves, who's fooling who? Are we deceiving ourselves? What is clear is that we definitely cannot continue like this. Uh, this is my, my leader and um, I, she's, she's an amazing woman, an amazing woman. And um, you know, in the course of, of my career, I've met a number of really outstanding people um, who are people of conviction and passion. She definitely is one of them. So if you would allow me, please. Yes, please. Um, you know, for young people, there's a sense of immediacy. You know, it's like mm -hmm. everything has to be instant coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, you switch on your in inst internet and, you know, all the so-called answers are there, whether it's fake news or real news. What we do owe them as elders is that truth and the pursuit of that truth, the relentless pursuit of that truth. If for a moment they feel like this entire exercise under INEX, ele INEC, elections, PVCs, we said to them after NSARS, your PVC, your ballot is your bullet, yes. is your bullet, yes. your ballot is your bullet, get your PVCs. If we dash their hopes, if we say to them that we are hypocrites, that all that matters is um, winner takes all, power for its own sake, we would have lost an entire generation of Nigerians. We may not be able to get them back. We may not be able to get them back. So we owe them truth. We owe them truth. We don't owe them hypocrisy. You know, there's a talk of healing and reconciliation. I worked in South Africa for a number of years for the Commonwealth Secretariat and then for the UN. And uh, so I was a first-hand observer and participant in the truth and reconciliation process. You cannot have reconciliation without truth. And truth requires restitution. So the three go together. If you genuinely want reconciliation, there must be truth and there must be restitution. There are consequences. If we do not give children, young people, this, our future, because really what, that's what we're talking about. If we do not give our future credence that there is at least a, a, a thread of morality, 
running through our leadership cadres and that we are prepared to preserve and promote that morality, we lose them and we lose our country. Is that what we want? This is from President Biden in November 2022. He said, we must, with an overwhelming voice, stand against political violence and voters' intimidation. Stand up and speak against it. I therefore urge the youth speak against political violence. Speak against voters' intimidation.